Okay, um, today's handout, the Frayer. Uh, you're going to compare the two steps, transcription and translation of protein synthesis. Make sure the definition is in your own words. Okay, copied definitions are threes. And then characteristics is what other notes help you remember it? Okay, so how do you tell the two apart? How do you remember that this is, that's what this vocab word does? Other stuff that's helpful for you. Then how is it different than the other process? And draw a diagram of that step and caption that step. Before we do that though, I had some emails yesterday afternoon saying that people were struggling with the entire process big picture questions. Uh, so we're gonna very quickly back up and watch like what is DNA and how does it work? Uh, we're gonna watch four minutes of it. Then we're gonna go through the PowerPoint really quickly to make sure we're all on the same page and then you have work time to finish yesterday's notes and work on the prayers. As we're going through these things, you can be answering questions. Okay, so have those in front of you and be ready to fill stuff out that you missed. DNA, also known as deoxyribonucleic acid, is a molecule. It's a bunch of atoms stuck together. In the case of DNA, these atoms combine to form the shape of a long, spiraling ladder, sort of like this one here. If you ever studied biology or saw the movie Jurassic Park, you probably heard that DNA acts as a blueprint or a recipe for a living thing. But how? How on earth can a mere molecule act as a blueprint for something as complex and wonderful as a tree, a dog, or a dinosaur? To help answer that question, let's first take a quick look at amino acids. Amino acids are tiny little chemicals inside our bodies that are so important, they're often referred to as the building blocks of life. There's about 20 different kinds, each with their own unique shape. The neat thing about them is they can be attached to each other, kind of like Legos, to produce an endless variety of larger particles known as proteins. Amino acids make up proteins, Proteins, along with other chemicals, combine to form living cells. Cells make up tissues. Tissues make up organs. And organs, when they're all put together and functioning, of course, combine to form living creatures like you and me. These proteins that make up our bodies, and keep in mind, there's millions of different kinds of proteins, they each have to be formed in the perfect shape in order to function. If they're the wrong shape, they usually won't work. That's where DNA comes in. DNA does a lot of interesting things, some of which we don't fully understand, but one of its main and most well understood functions is to tell amino acids how to line up and form themselves into the perfect protein shapes. In theory, if the right proteins are built at the right time and in the right place, everything else from cells to organs to entire creatures will come out just fine. This here is a simplified model of DNA. It shows us that the steps of the ladder are made up of four different kinds of chemicals shown here by different colors and letters. If you look at just one half of the molecule, you can read its chemical sequence or genetic code from top to bottom, sort of like a book. A single strand of DNA is extremely long, millions of letters long. It spends most of its life coiled up like a noodle living inside the nucleus or the centerpiece of a cell. Amino acids, however, live outside the nucleus in what's called the cytoplasm. To help DNA interact with the cytoplasm and convert those amino acids into proteins, special chemicals inside the nucleus make partial copies of the DNA code. These partial copies, called RNA, look a lot like DNA, but they're shorter, of course, and they're missing one of their sides. Their small shape and size allows them to fit through tiny pores in the nucleus, out to the cytoplasm, and into the mouth of another particle called a ribosome. Ribosomes are protein-building machines. 
They read the RNA code three letters at a time, suck amino acids out of their surroundings, and stick them together in a chain according to the RNA code. As the chain grows, it bends, it folds, and it sticks to itself to form a perfectly shaped protein. Every three letters of the RNA code tell the ribosome which of the 20 different kinds of amino acids should be added next. For example, CAA tells the ribosome to grab a glutamine, AGU tells it to grab a serine, and so on. Okay, so each amino acid has its own shape. So if you swap out a different amino acid in a spot, then your final folded shape might be different. Okay, so that cystic fibrosis has one, one base is wrong. That one base means one amino acid is wrong. It's in a super important spot, which makes the final protein fold wrong. You have a disease. It might be in an unimportant spot and, you know, now you have, have blue eyes instead of brown eyes. Big deal. That one's in a bad spot and it causes cystic fibrosis. Oops. Once a protein is built, it can then go on to do a number of different things, one of which could be to help form a brand new cell. So to answer the original question, what is DNA? DNA is a molecular blueprint for a living thing. How does it work? DNA creates RNA, RNA creates protein, proteins go on to form life. This entire process, as complicated, as sophisticated, as magical as it might seem, is entirely based in chemistry. It can be studied, it can be understood. All right. I'm John Perry. And that's DNA. Okay, so the PowerPoint. Very, very quickly. All this was in your readings and in your stuff, so we're going to go through it um, super fast. There's two steps transcription and translation in protein synthesis. Okay? Uh, the way I remember them transcription has the word script in it, and translation is a word you know, translation. Okay, script, scribe. You're doing group work, your job is to scribe. What are you doing? Writing down. You're writing. It was in order of bases. And you rewrite it in the order of bases. Okay, if I give you something and tell you to translate it, what do you need to do? You need to put it in a new New words, new language, right? So we start with order of bases, and we change languages to order of amino acids. Okay, so super big picture. Transcription is a copy of the DNA, DNA to RNA. It goes from order of bases to order of bases. Language is still the same. Step two, translation, happens in the cytoplasm. We're changing languages, we're translating it from order of bases to the order of the amino acids. The language changed from bases to amino acids, from DNA to protein. Okay? So, what happens during transcription? We're making an mRNA strand from the original DNA strand mRNA stands for messenger. It is a copy of the message. Okay, it looks almost exactly the same as the DNA with two key differences. RNA is single-stranded. We already talked about how the sugar in the backbone is ribose instead of deoxyribose. Okay, it's also single-stranded and there's no thymine in RNA. Anywhere you want to write a T, you write a U for uracil instead. Okay. Because the RNA is single-stranded, it is skinnier, it can fit through the holes in the nucleus. So it can leave the nucleus and go out into the cytoplasm where the business of being alive happens. Okay. 
So it's going to find our construction workers, which is the ribosome. We want to stick with our DNA is the blueprint of life and build a house analogy. The ribosomes are our construction workers. They're going to read the copy of the blueprints and build the product. Okay? And the tRNA, the transfer RNA, is our delivery trucks bringing in the amino acids for us to build with. Um, the chain of amino acids, once it's released and folds, is a protein. Okay, so our key players, the parts you need to make this happen. The ribosome is the organelle or part of the cell that does translation. Amino acids are the pieces that make up proteins. mRNA is the copy of DNA. It's the entire message, the entire set of directions. And then the codon is the set of three letters at a time that we look at to tell us which amino acid to add. Okay, this is linked in Schoology and um, we had access to it yesterday, so I'm going to keep going through quickly. If you want to bring this up on your own computer when we're done, go for it. Um, but I don't want to take up the whole day waiting for people to write. So if I give you the entire DNA strand, okay, you're going to look at the one that is 3 to 5. You're going to use the one that is 3 to 5 to build the missing half. Okay, so A pairs with what base? And we can't write T. Mm -hmm. A pairs with U in RNA. C pairs with? Mm -hmm. A still pairs with U. T pairs with? Mm -hmm. T pairs with A. Okay, and so on and so forth. If I only on the worksheet give you one piece of DNA, one set of letters, that is the template you need to build the complementary half for for the RNA. Okay, once you've done that, then you want to break it into sets of three. And then you're going to go from the sets of three, start in the middle and work your way out to get to the name of the amino acid. So UUU is phenylalanine. GUU is valine. AAU is asparagine. Okay. That's how the wheel works. All right, so we already said, though, that numerous times life is actually more difficult than that. This is the structure of a gene in your DNA. Okay, so how do you know? How does your body know where, what we need to make copies of? What do we need to make proteins for? Okay, at the beginning of every gene is a promoter that's sort of like direction. So when I had my coffee this morning, I put milk in it. Milk has lactose in it. So I need to make enzymes that break down lactose. If I am incapable of making those enzymes anymore, I am what we call lactose intolerant. And when you drink milk, you get an upset tummy because it just ferments in there with the bacteria instead of digesting. Oh, um, okay, which by the way, lactose intolerant is the normal condition. No other animal on planet Earth drinks milk as an adult. So normal, this gene is on while you're a baby, and when you become an adult or you get so old, this promoter shuts off and says, don't use this gene anymore, we don't need it. Okay? So if you're lactose intolerant, you totally still have the directions for being able to drink milk. Your body's just decided you're not using them anymore. Um, but because humans, domesticated animals, and continue to drink milk, we've had mutations where this gene doesn't shut off in a lot of people anymore, so, so you can drink milk your whole life. But, I mean, people do become lactose intolerant as they get older. That's something that can happen, and what happened is your promoter just shut off and said, no, nah, we're not doing that anymore. Um, so that promoter, once the lactose is in my stomach, it's going to activate this promoter attached to the lactase gene and say, hey, right here's the directions. 
Okay, so then we're gonna make copies of lactase, which is the enzyme that can break down that weird sugar. And so then I digest the milk and I don't get sick. And then at the end of it, there's a terminator or stop sequence that says, all right, protein's done. Quick copy. So how does it look? Uh, when the promoter is activated, the ribosomal, or the uh, RNA polymerase attaches because it's RNA polymerase and not DNA polymerase. When it makes its copy of the DNA, it makes the copy as RNA. Okay. When it gets to the terminator, the stop, it lets go because life is difficult. Okay. None of your genes are actually <coughs> edited. There's garbage in the middle of it. So once you make the full RNA of the entire gene, then I have no idea how your body knows how to do this and how it does it correctly every time. But it goes in and it cuts out the garbage sections and glues back together the important instructions and sends that out into the cytoplasm to make the protein. Okay, so we have to actually edit the RNA. We're not going into a whole lot of that detail, but just FYI. Um, bacteria don't have garbage sections in their DNA. They copy and use it all. Cells with the nucleus, we've acquired junk that we have to then cut and edit out. All right, so then once the RNA leaves the nucleus, it finds a ribosome. Part of the structure of the ribosome is made of rRNA. Okay. The ribosome reads a codon at a time, and the tRNA, the transfer RNA, delivers the amino acids. Okay, so the ribosome, the codon, anticodon sort of works. Again, sticking with our building analogy, right? Uh, these guys are the delivery trucks, uh, and then you know the guy at the gate at Menards is checking your receipt to make sure that what you loaded is correct. If it's not correct, he's throwing you out. I'm letting the right directions come in. Okay, so if these base pairs don't match, that amino acid is rejected for now. I'm gonna try to find the right one. It's just in the cytoplasm though, so it can try again later. Um, so we read three letters at a time and slowly add amino acids. If we as humans are trying to figure out the structure of this protein, okay, the edited mRNA has the entire set of directions for us. That's what we look at. We don't look at the tRNAs because that's just the directions for one amino acid at a time. Okay, so the codon wheel is set up for the mRNA, the whole chain. So we read three bases at a time to figure out which amino acid to add. So this wheel matches the mRNA, okay? Um, for the most part, when you're making your list of amino acids, you can do the first three letters. That will be sufficient. The exception to that is if it's an acid, you need to add the word acid because glutamic acid will be confused with glutamine if you just do the first three letters. Aspartic acid will be confused with asparagine if you just do the first three letters. Okay, so GLU is glutamine, GLU acid is glutamic acid. Make sense? I'm trying to make you not write big, complicated words all the time, but in that, in that case, you need to write more than just three letters. All the rest of them, the first three letters are different. All right, and then at the end of the mRNA, there's a stop codon. Okay, so if you look at the wheel, UAA says stop. There's not an amino acid that's delivered. That's the signal to the ribosome to let go and let the protein fold and go work. Um, the YouTube video you hopefully watched yesterday, this is the Amoeba Sisters one, okay? So, to practice this, if I give you both, remember you're going to look at the three to five and rewrite the pairs. So T pairs with A, A pairs with, and everybody should answer. A pairs with? U. C 
pairs with? G pairs with? C pairs with? T pairs with? G pairs with? Okay, then go back and mark your three bases. Okay, just to help keep it straight in your brain so you don't slide and get up. Then you go to your wheel. AUG is which amino acid? Start in the middle and go up. AUG is methionine. CGA. CCU. UAG. Okay. And whoever did this was wrong because it's not glycine, it's proline. We've checked it three times. Um, to get your final product, I need to fix the PowerPoint. Okay. Questions? To make a little bit more sense? Okay, so your paperwork is all due tomorrow. I should already have um, that first three pages from Monday, Tuesday, right? The protein synthesis notes and the frayers are due tomorrow. Use the time you have left to get them done.